Hi boys and girls. I'm going to show you how to make Keith Haring sculptures. In learning about Keith Haring, what do we know about Keith Haring? We know that he started out as a graffiti artist. We know that he drew very simplistic figures. They were very popular too, very colorful. We also know that even though his figures were really simplistic, he demonstrated some kind of action in the figures that he drew. And he did that with the poses that he drew and also with the action lines around it. So we're going to make tinfoil Keith Haring sculptures. There's one, there's the other one. I really love this one. He's like jumping for joy. These, I was inspired to do these by my, da -da -da -da, my armature. Those of you who've been in my classroom know that his name is either Bob or Bobby. Uh, and I love these because these are a great way to learn how to draw the human figure, right? So if I pose this like this, it kind of looks like it's running. If I can pose it like that, maybe he's like, hooray, I just got 100 on my test, yay! Right, so these are really cool for showing action and showing the way the human body moves. And what is a sculpture? A sculpture is a piece of art that you can see from all the way around. It's three-dimensional. Okay, so get your tin foil and a scrap piece of paper. That's all you need. And I'm gonna show you what to do. We're going to make our three-dimensional out of tin foil Keith Haring sculpture. Then we are going to put it on some kind of background. You all know what this material is. We talked about it before. A paper bag. You're gonna draw some action lines, very integral in Keith Haring's work. Photograph it, and then you're gonna send it to me. To start with, you need a piece of paper so that you can make a ball for your sculpture's head. Okay, so I've got this little piece of paper here. Voila, this will be perfect for my sculpture's head. Okay, next thing you're gonna need is a piece of aluminum foil or tin foil. So you're gonna go ahead and you see how long this piece of tin foil is? You're gonna pull out a piece that's about that long and about that wide. Take perfect and throw it away. It is not important to be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my tin foil. Oh, look at that, I finished the roll. Well, you do know what that means, don't you? That sure means that I am going to have this tube for a fancy piece of artwork. Hmm, love hanging on to those for something. Okay, so here we go. I've got my tin foil, I'm ready to go. I'm gonna put the ball, that was that piece of paper that I rolled up, into the center of my tin foil. And guess what? That's going to create the head for my Keith Haring sculpture. That's pretty good. Okay, now I like the way this is kind of worked shaping up. I've got one, two, three, four corners still showing. Doesn't matter if you do or you don't, it's just working out that way for me. So I'm gonna start to roll up these two shorter sides to make arms. Actually, it looks a little like an angel right now. Starting to see how there's a head, a neck, and now I'm going to form the arms. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. No, 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 we don't worry about perfect. Next, I'm going to make some legs. Pretty cool. Those arms look incredibly long to me. So I'm gonna do a little twisting here. Now that I have shaped 
my Keith Haring three-dimensional sculpture. It's a sculpture because I can look at it from all the way around. Find a piece of paper. Now, I showed you these before. This one is on a paper bag. Mm -hmm. You know I love these incredible resources that you can just find lying around. This is another paper bag. I found another kind of paper bag when I went to get my bagel this morning. It came in this nice white paper bag. So I took it apart. The best way to find out how something is constructed is to deconstruct it. I took the bag apart. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to place my Keith Haring action figure right here on this paper bag. I'm going to take, I have a Sharpie marker. Don't send me a message saying, Ms. Romano, I don't have a Sharpie marker. I can't do this project. Not true. You can use a ballpoint pen. You can use a regular pencil. You can use a crayon. You can use any other marker that you can find. But what I do want you to do is find out where the action is taking place and make some marks. bit of a bend in here too. I feel some energy movement in there also. All right, so once you're finished with this portion of your assignment, you're almost done. What do you have to do after that? You need to take a photograph and upload. Enjoy, have fun.